today at the end of the show, I'll tell you how you can join the Goodbye Teacher Tired Challenge at coolcatteacher.com forward slash tired. I'll tell you more about it at the end of the show. But for now, let's get started. Happy Tuesday. Today, as we're continuing Encore Week on the 10-Minute Teacher and counting down the top episodes of 2017, in at the number 14 spot is a friend of mine, Joe Fothery, who also works with the National Network of State Teachers of the Year and helped get some amazing interviews for the show. You'll hear some more of those in the top episodes of 2017. So now, here's Joe Fothery, What Great Teachers Do. The 10 Minute Teacher Podcast with Vicki Davis. Every weekday, you'll learn powerful, practical ways to be a more remarkable teacher today. So today we're continuing our recording at NSTOY, the National Network for State Teachers of the Year. We have Joe Fothery with us. He is a 2016 Global Teacher Prize Top 10 winner, and he does a lot of work with NSTOY, and he actually is a full-time classroom teacher teaching creativity and innovation. But Joe, you and I today are going to talk about what do great teachers have in common, because you know and have worked with so many amazing teachers. Well, I'm excited because I look out at the world and we have, UNESCO says by 2030, uh, we have a uh, teacher shortage of 25.8 million teachers. And it's, it concerns me. What, what, what's, what's the next generation? Where, where, they, where are they going to look to for teachers? And I used to do a, I, I do a survey of my students every year and uh, used to be 30 to 40 percent of my kids wanted to be a classroom teacher. In the last four to five years, I'm down to about three to four percent of my student population. And so I look at these kids that are getting ready to come out of high school and they're creative and they're on fire and they want to change the world and they want to leave it at a better place than they were given. They have all the right components in their heart, but they're not looking at teaching as a profession. And then on the flip side, I look at the amazing teachers that I work with around the world, many of them that have been recognized at the highest level and many of them that unfortunately will never be recognized. But they have the same attributes. And so I'm I'm trying to figure out what's the missing link here. Why do these great kids not see the career path that great teaching can provide them? So I'm looking forward to having a conversation with you a little bit about that today, about what those attributes look like. Okay, so what do they look like? I think the first one is just uh, an incredible deep love for giving back to kids. And yesterday we had Stephen Ritz at the conference from the Green Bronx Machine, and and Stephen lives and works in the South Bronx. And, you know, he talks about it being a very challenged challenging disenfranchised community, but they're still people. They're people who love their kids. They love their community. You know, uh, work is a very difficult proposition because of the unemployment rates, but they want to get back and do things. But Stephen has found passion in his kids and he's finding ways to connect with these kids. Uh, We had a group of young men here for a uh, participating in a national fellowship for black male teachers. And one of the guys that was talking in it was about this deep love to give back to kids of color. He wants to be that black male role model. And so everybody, I think, has their different flavor of love, the reason they got into their teaching. But it all comes back to this fundamental piece about how they love kids. We had a conversation around a table this morning about a teacher who had lost a student uh, in a traumatic uh, accident a few couple of years ago. And, you know, she she was very articulate about the fact that about, you know, that was my child. Yeah. You know, because that's how we see them. We see them as an extension of our family. And so I think, first of all, it's that great love. And there are a lot of people that have a hard time mentioning that because there's obviously different kinds of love. And there's some teachers who have an inappropriate type, but we're talking just a deep, almost parental, you know, I mean, we can never pretend to be parents. But for me, I just feel like they're almost my kids. Well, exactly. I, I think, you know, the great teachers I'm around, that's how they feel. And there's definitely, you know, this wall that's out there that, you know, you just there's unfortunately these inappropriate things and there and, and 
you, you don't want to minimize the impact they have because they're they're just they're terrible incidents. But that's not where the bulk of the teaching and world right. goes. I mean, bulk of teaching world is about giving back and making mm-hmm. sure the next generation is successful. Yeah. And I see teachers every day giving everything they have to ensure these kids are successful. And so I think that's the first piece is just, you know, you're giving them yourself and you're working with each individual child. They all come in with, you know, their individual talents and their their weaknesses that we have to shore up. But the great teachers find ways to elevate the great ones to new heights and the ones that are struggling to help shore them up and find their strengths and build them up. And so, you know, I always like to, you know, focus on the positive and deal with the negative. And I think yeah. great teachers find ways to do that. What else? Well, I think the other one is uh, I I love the fact that, you know, we have teachers that really find out of the box ways to work and inspire each child. So we live right now in in a world that the the educational systems are very rigid, at least here in the United States and a lot of school systems around the country. And I don't think they were ever intended to be that way. So we have a lot of people that are out there and they're, you know, they're lambasting this or that. It's just it's just where we're at. It's what happens with systems development over time and as you have you know 300 plus million people that have 300 plus million ideas about how education is this is what we've agreed upon but it doesn't always necessarily work in the everyday environment and so great classroom teachers understand how to look outside of the box and I think what you know we do as classroom teachers when we went through our pre-service training we were skilled in the science of teaching and you continue to get trained in the science of teaching throughout the course of your career But what I love about great teachers, the world changers, they're masters in the art of teaching. And I think that's the real magic in the classroom where they know how to look at each situation and find ways to inspire and engage kids, no matter what the subject matter, no matter what uh, the curriculum you're looking at, uh, you know, issues with it, budget issues you have in school, they find ways to be successful. That doesn't make it okay for those shortfalls to be there or for a system to be rigid because those things need to change. But I really appreciate those teachers that have learned how to go above and beyond to create that magic in the classroom. And don't you find that it's when many of those teachers bring their own personal interests and loves into the classroom? I mean, I remember is judging the Global Teacher Prize, you get to see lots of different types of teachers. And I remember, you know, one teacher was dancing and One teacher was doing this or that, and it's almost like a little personal spark of themselves that comes into the classroom to make it unique. Well, I think the first thing, I mean, even a kindergarten student, they can tell whether you're a phony. Yeah. I mean, (laughs) some of the smartest people in the world are four, and and they they just know when you come in the classroom whether you're real and authentic and you want to be there for them. And so whenever you're able to peel those layers away and you bring you to the classroom and the kids know that you're in it with them and that it's not like, okay, I'm assigning this just to assign it, that there's a purpose with it. Mr. Father, he's going to be there the entire way, sometimes leading from the front, but most of the time supporting from the back and giving them a platform to be able to showcase and do things. I, I think I think that's the real trick. And a lot of people early on in their careers, it's difficult because you're still defining who you are as a person mm-hmm. and you're looking to emulate the people around you. But I think at some point in time, you've just got to be you. And I know for me, as in my second year of teaching, I was asked to teach uh, English to low level learners. And a lot of these kids were 17 and 18 years of age. They had a second, third grade reading level. Attendance was a real issue. Discipline problems were, you know, just an everyday occurrence. And uh, what I was given was the traditional English curriculum. And I was, I had these aspirations that every kid loved to diagram sentences. Mm. You know, <laughs> they all went home at night and had adjective and adverb parties where they all got together and figured those things out. And that was, that was a mistruth. And so what I had to do was strip things back and we integrated hip hop uh, music into the classroom and I had to bring a little bit of my personality in and become more real and, you know, hop up there and sing with them and be off key and, you know, let them have a little fun with me in the classroom because then it became okay for them to make mistakes. If there was one lie that you think many people in the world believe about teachers that you could completely erase out of all of these brains, what would that lie be that you would want to just completely get rid of? Well, I think the biggest one I would have to deal with is teachers don't care. 
I, I, if, if the general public, and, and as teachers, I think it's incumbent upon us learning how to do a better job of telling the story of what we do, because most of the teachers, they, they take a back seat. They never tell all the stories of the money they donate to the schools, the, the, the unbelievable countless hours they spend way above and beyond the call of duty, uh, just, just the A game that they bring to school every day, and, and the care they have not only for the kids, but for the kids' parents. Mm -hmm. and their communities. And I guess, if anything, what I'd love to do is be able to stand before people and paint this picture of what a real classroom teacher looks like and let people see how the bulk of America's teaching force really is and how they care for your kids and how they want yeah. them to find success in the next in, in the next years. And that's really part of the purpose of the show, this the 10-Minute Teacher Show and having it five days a week because I think when you sit back and you look at the amazing profession of teachers, there's so many amazing teachers out there. But do you know, it's so challenging to get people to come on the show to be interviewed because most teachers say, I'm just a teacher, there's nothing special. And they don't understand that their existence, the fact they show up every day, the fact they love kids, that's special. Well, at 29 years in my in my career, I now look back with t kids I've mentored all over the world that they're community leaders, they're, they're doctors, they're lawyers, they're farmers, and I got to be part, literally part of building community. And I've watched it in real time in my eyes, and there is no other job on the planet that gives you that satisfaction, mm -hmm. not just when they're 10 in your classroom or 18, but when they're 38 and they're still doing things, and you walk into their place of business, and it's a immediately you still have that same respect because they know what you gave to them and continue to give to them. Yeah. So I think it's the most exciting job on the planet. And I would just encourage people that are listening beyond the, on the classroom to your podcast, that if your children are looking for careers, teaching is a tremendous career opportunity for them. And we'd love to enjoy, have them join hands with us. And it starts with all of us treating this wonderful profession with respect and sharing powerful stories of what teachers are doing because teachers and our students are very remarkable. We teachers have too much to do, and it's taken me years to really understand where to focus my time so I didn't just live in my classroom. Well, I've learned so much from my friend Angela Watson as part of her 40-hour work week club. Now, I still work quite a bit more than 40 hours, but it's not the 70 and 80 that I used to work. And a lot of the tips from her club really have helped me out. Now, the club isn't open until December 30th for enrollment, but she has a new helpful free resource. Goodbye, Teacher Tired. Five days to doing fewer things better. To get this free resource, just go to coolcatteacher.com forward slash tired to learn more. Or if you want to learn about her club, go ahead to coolcatteacher.com forward slash 40. Thank you for listening to the 10 Minute Teacher Podcast. You can download the show notes and see the archive at coolcatteacher.com forward slash podcast. Never stop learning.